Hello Guardians and Seven here, and I'll be going through a breakdown of the fifth encounter of Oryx Exalted, or as I like to call it, Pantheon Phase 2. If you want a guide on the first four encounters, drop a comment saying that you're interested, and while you're down there, consider dropping a like on this video, it would be appreciated. Before we dive in to what's new, I'm going to start off with explaining the base mechanics of this boss fight for those who are new or returning players. So skip ahead to the timestamp below to get to the mechanic changes for those who are familiar with this encounter already. Alright, so to begin with, you will need 4 players to take a plate and 2 players as floaters. One of the floaters for the first section and the second floater for the second section. Floaters' jobs are there to clear ads and take a plate if one of the original plate owners is torn, which we'll get into in a little bit. Once the Tolan is awakened, Oryx will appear and eventually float to one of the four platforms and slam his hand on it. This slam will start two things. The plate that was hit will glow with a green circle around it and someone in the party will be torn or goes into the void. The person whose plate was slain will jump onto it to be able to find another Tolan Orm floating above one of the other three platforms and call the second person to jump on their plate. Please. I'm torn. I can't uh, defend. Uh, R1. R1. You're on R1. What is it? It is R L1. L1. Got it. Not. Getting on. Yes. Getting on. To create a jumping platform for the person who's torn to touch the Tolan or at the very top of the jump. While the jump is part is going on, people at the four plates will have to kill one ogre that will spawn next to their plate, as well as kill a knight that is in the opposite of the user's plate to take a look at the map here. The ogre will drop a taken blight bubble which dies and it's important in this next bit. The reason for killing the knight is to prevent them from dispelling the taken blight left behind by the ogres. Back to the torn jumper. On the third time, the person will need to interact with the Tolan orb but not just touch him, so make sure you remember that. The third person will then interact with a knight that will appear in the middle of the room with a shield around it to take the shield off the knight to be able to protect the group from the bomb detonation. Kill the knight and stay in the middle of the room. The other four players who are next to the plates will need to run in to the taken blights when you get the notice Orcs calls upon the darkness. Stay inside the orb until you see your name pop up on the left side of the screen and run inside the bubble to be protected from the explosions. The explosion will stun Oryx to be able to damage him in the chest. Going bombs. Go to mid, go to mid. After there will still be two events that will happen. Either mines, which targets each player in the fire team, and after a few seconds detonates. So run around, kill the knights on the plates, you'll be good to go. Or the second one, which our clan calls Thunderdome, which will pull one member into the fire team into a dome with a mini oryx with a sword. Kill the miniature version and you're good to go. But the longer you take to kill the miniature version, more fire team members will be pulled into the dome. This is where everything resets, rinse and repeat until you get the last bit of health. Now on to final stand. Whoever has the bubble for this part will need to move forward a little bit so you can have access to the left as well as the right because there'll be two ogres that will spawn you need to kill them and they will drop those blights. We'll run through those blights again to stun Oryx and deal the last bit of damage and congratulations on the clear. Okay now for the Pantheon version. It's pretty much the same as the normal version, four plates, two floaters, you're good to go. Now the new thing is that the knights running to cancel the blights will be consistently spawning in, so floaters will need to be on point to make sure the knights don't get to the blights. The knights have arc shields, so having an arc weapon to break the shields faster is very handy. Another thing is that Tormentor will spawn after each damage cycle, so make sure you keep out for him, otherwise he will wipe your team. We didn't get the Thunderdome version in our run, but we did get mines and the knights on the plates have solar shields and very large health pools, so just keep in mind on that. Besides that, nothing else has changed for Final Stand, isn't different, so hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel and share this with your friends if they're having a hard time with this encounter. Happy hunting, Guardians. Let's go. Shorex.